but it's amazing in a Buddhist country, Southern Thailand is, is part Buddhist, partially Muslim, but most of, of, of Thailand is either Buddhist or Buddhist and animist. And to see the meeting we had in the women's prison, hundreds of women coming to faith in Jesus out of Buddhism, animism, and Islam, mainly Buddhism. Hundreds, hundreds. Uh, Scott Noble, the memorial missionary, was doing English classes in the prison as a social service and a means of evangelism because they let him use the English scriptures as a textbook to teach English to these women prisoners. But the warden was persuaded um, to allow a Christian service. And uh, Christine Randalls, the wife of Pastor Bill Randalls, knows her, had been there. She's not a Christian. She's a nominal Buddhist. But she was favorable towards Christians, thanks to the efforts of Scott Noble and Bill Randalls. In any event, we had a service. And to have hundreds of women praising the Lord Jesus the way they were, these women were involved basically in drug-related crime, drug smuggling. Uh, we're talking about the Golden Triangle now, the primary source of heroin, or one of the two primary sources of heroin and opiates in the world. And uh, God is indeed moving in Asia. He is indeed moving powerfully. It was quite a trip to Thailand. I had been there before, of course, but uh, we have a mission in northern Thailand, but this time was a particular blessing. However, the Philippines is another story entirely. We have an ongoing work in the Philippines for some years, and some of you know, we did a medical mission for our children. We brought in Christian medical uh, uh, people from, uh, uh, headed by a Christian physician from Singapore, but this time we had to do something different. One of the things the medical mission, the children's medical mission indicated, although we had to have certain children with open heart surgery and things like this, and corrective surgery for um, uh, palate deformations, uh, deformations and birth, birth defects, cleft palates and things like this, uh, was the need for dental care for the children. We had little kids, some of them like six, with, with terrible toothaches and swelling gums and swelling jaws, just the pain. Remember, these are rubbish dump children. These are children we rescue from the, literally from the garbage dump. They were scavenging in the garbage dump trying to survive. If they have parents, the parents are too poor to take care of them. Hence, that's our mission. We take care of these rubbish dump kids that we rescue from literally from the garbage mountains where they try to scavenge a subsistence. Well, we take care of these kids, as most of you know. Um, we see that they get educated. We see that they get all of their necessary clothes and rain goods, which are important in the monsoon season, raincoats and boots and things like this and umbrellas, very important. Uh, because of the monsoons. And uh, of course, we teach them the gospel and we teach them about the Lord Jesus. But we, uh, uh, not least of all, feed them. We make sure that they all eat and that their health is taken care of. So the medical mission indicated we would need a dental mission. And it became pretty obvious. When you got these little kids with teeth that are not green but black, you've got a problem. We did it differently this time. When you bring in foreign medical people, you have to get permission from the government and the, and the health department and all this, and it can become very complicated. So this time I went and I interviewed Filipino dentists. We wanted dentists that were qualified to a Western standard, that had Western modern equipment like autoclaving but, and, and good x-ray facilities, but also we wanted ones that were saved Christians. Um, we, of course, paid them for the services, but they we negotiated a discount, and they, being Christians, were quite cooperative with us. So we had the medical mission. We have about 100 kids we take care of, but about 60 required dental care, and about 49 have received it so far. Some are going to require, obviously, second and third visits. We had a ton of extractions. It was so funny. These kids had never been to a dentist, but the littlest ones didn't know what a dentist was. When the dental nurse picked them up and put them in the dentist chair, and the dentist came in with the white medical tunic, they thought they were going to get a haircut. It was unbelievable. They, they thought it was a barber or something. They didn't know what to make of it. When the, when the dentist and the dental nurse was telling them to open their mouth, and they didn't know what to make of it. But you can look at the photos. Absolutely beautiful children, and we praise the Lord that we finally got this dental mission underway. It was actually scheduled for some time earlier after the 
medical mission, but as you know, my lymphoedema and cellulitis that nearly claimed my decrepit protoplasm last year uh, caused major delays in our schedules. I had to get there and interview these dentists and so forth. But we did it, we did it right, and it's underway, and God is gracious, and God is good, and the children's health has improved substantially. The other thing we're going to be doing this year that we've not done, but we're going to make sure we do it this year, is we're contracting with a private company to bring in what some people call Smoky Joe's, smoke blowing machines. We're going to fumigate as soon as the monsoons stop, because it's the stagnant water that breeds the larvae for the mosquitoes that spread the dengue fever. We have a non-stop battle with dengue fever in the Philippines that affect the children. Uh, major problem pediatrically. Uh, so this year we're going to actually get the kids out of there, come in and exterminate everything that flies except birds. Uh, we need to get a handle on the dengue fever. So that's the other need. But your prayers have meant a lot and also your support has meant a lot. Now, it's the policy of Moriel not to ask anybody but the Lord for money. There's only been a few times where we've ever had a fund drive, and that was in times of major, major disasters or emergencies. The first time we did it was for the Chernobyl children who were brought to England for medical treatment against leukemia they couldn't get in, in what was then the end of the Soviet Union. They were white as, as linen, white as snow, because of the lack of erythrocytes, the lack of red cells, these kids were dying. As you might remember, when Chernobyl happened, the party members, the communist party members and their families were evacuated. The other people were left there to be exposed to the radiation and Pravda and its Vestia and these other people were simply telling the locals that those who were saying it was dangerous were the enemies of socialism spreading propaganda. Well, that was the Soviet Union, it's the joys and blessings of socialism. In any event, that was the first time we ever did an appeal. The last time we did one was with the earthquake in Haiti. We don't generally do appeals unless it's a major, major humanitarian disaster. However, this time will not be an exception. We're not going to do an appeal. We're simply going to ask the Lord and ask people to pray that the Lord brings in money we need. The dental mission is already funded, praise God. It's 85% funded. Uh, it's not a pressing financial need. We were ready for this for some months. We began gearing up for this right after the uh, medical mission. Uh, but the ministry's grown and vehicles get old. We're going to need another vehicle to transport more children. The way we pack them in is ridiculous and frankly, a bit dangerous at times. Uh, we're going to have to get another vehicle in the Philippines. So we're asking the Lord for the money. We're not asking you, we're asking the Lord. Now, sometimes the Lord prompts people to do something, praise God when he does, let our right hand not know what our left hand is doing, etc. Although we will, of course, for legal reasons and financial reasons, provide a receipt and so forth. But we're asking the Lord to meet the continuing needs of the work in the Philippines. Um, these children mean a lot to us. They're absolutely beautiful. Our work in Africa continues, of course, with the AIDS children, and we're hoping to expand it by joining up with a work with a sister who needs to retire in Uganda. She has between 40 and 50 HIV children. That's Sister Carol Adams. We'd love, love for Moriel to take that work over. There the need is not financial. There the need is for missionaries. We need people who are medically qualified who will call for that work. So if you could pray for the work in Africa, it would mean a tremendous amount also. Again, because of my illness, our desire to open up our own orphanage in India, in Amritsa, uh, among the Dala children, the outcasts from the Hindu caste system, has been delayed. Pastor Mark Johnson and myself had all kinds of plans and we still have those plans, but they had to be put on the back burner because of my health. Nonetheless, we are still supporting our work um, in Hyderabad, India, but we want to have a Moriel work as the Lord would have it eventually in India. Uh, but the Philippines is an ongoing enterprise. Again, thank you all so much for your prayers and support. May the Lord bless you and thank you on behalf of the children. We're going to include some of the photos of the children and the dental mission and we'll be posting on Facebook the photos of the women's meetings at the women's prison in Thailand as well. But it was quite a profitable trip in the Lord. People are being saved. Children are being saved. 
people being saved out of Roman Catholicism in, in the Philippines, people being saved out of Buddhism and animism, particularly in Thailand. Our missionaries, God bless them. Pastor Paul Seville and his family and his team, Ronaldo, and uh, Scott and his wife, Kai, who is Thai, Scott Noble. Our missionaries are doing a fantastic job. Uh, please pray for them as well. Um, but once again, we do thank the Lord for his goodness to us, to help us, to help these children. And may he bless and enrich you in Jesus. Thank you so much. My name is Jacob Prash, Moriel Missions. careful what I say, we are associated with the underground church in a certain communist country in the Far East, which is not China. And I go there secretly and we train local pastors. Uh, most of these pastors, in fact, all of them have been arrested, thrown in prison for their faith. But we received an SOS about 10 days ago from this particular country. I can't say it but you'll know what it is. Um, they've rounded up a number, a large number of, of indigenous pastors have been rounded up by the communist authorities. What they're attempting to do is to imitate the Chinese model and force them into a state church where the doctrine and so forth would be controlled by the communist party and by the communist government. Our people are house churches. They're saved, born again, largely tribal people um, who undergone tremendous persecution, some of whom battled, well, all of them battled to a degree poverty, but some tremendous poverty. And we received an SOS and we need to get back in there and do something shortly. Um, these things, again, are, are potentially dangerous. The most that's going to happen to me or a Moriel person is likely arrest and deportation and being banned from future entry. That's the most that's likely to happen. Um, but the indigenous people will be left to take it on the jaw, so as so to speak. So we're praying for protection, um, not just for Moriel and for me, but for the indigenous people who we really have a burden to help. Um, I have to be translated and so forth into both their lang national language and into the tribal languages. It's quite a project. In the past, we've set up underground printing presses and things like this, but the persecution has been ratcheted up again, um, and it's a difficult situation. Additionally, you know, I love spending money on the evangelism and on children's medical and dental missions and, and, and spraying against dengue fever. I, I got no problem. But I hate spending money on it. 
on expensive airfares to and from Asia all the time. But you got to get there somehow, and it's a long walk. Um, there are financial needs associated with our work with the underground church in the Far East and in certain other countries. So again, we do pray that the Lord will meet the need, and we ask that you will keep us in prayer. But uh, please pray for these pastors who are in prison, uh, who are connected with us, and please pray for our own ministry as we seek to help them. It's really important that we train up an indigenous underground church in this country. It already exists, but again, biblical knowledge is at a premium. Um, these are people who are persecuted, who are tribal people, who are simple people, but who love Jesus very, very much, and they pay a tremendous price for their faith. And it is a very humbling thing for me personally to be allowed to be used of the Lord to go to such people. As I always say, I teach them about the Word of God. They teach me what the Word of God is about. There's a big difference. By the grace of the Lord, I can teach them about the Word of God, but they teach me what the Word of God is about. It's quite a thing. We have to obviously not say anything because there are web scans and things like this by the secret police in this particular country. And we have to be careful. I don't want to wind up on a visa restriction list. Uh, we already are skirting close to the edge sometimes. I almost got nailed once already, and I have to be pretty discreet what I do and say publicly. But again, thank you so much for your prayers. God bless. <laughs>